Sure, I cheated on you. But if you're a grown-up, you can deal with it. You found the best place for your vengeful needs. This episode will blow your mind. Warning, these revenge stories are definitely upsetting to cheaters. Loyal girl goes scorched earth when her best friend and boyfriend cheated behind her back. Her revenge was swift and cold, sending them into high orbit. Cheating wife of 23 years ditches her husband for a fun adventure. But without her, his quality of life skyrockets. And he gets his revenge. Boyfriend gets cheated on, but decides to repay the favor hundredfold by stealing her affair partner. Yes, you heard that right. Tell the cheating like button, it smells like hot dog water. This story is told from a female perspective. A friend suggested I post this here. This happened a couple of years ago. I'm a 28 year old female and I was dating my 29 year old boyfriend Max for five years. We were full on together. We lived together, shared finances, had two dogs, etc. My best friend Amy, who is the same age as me, lived 10 minutes away, so we were always with each other. We were pretty much the three musketeers. One day, I'm scrolling on Instagram, and I see my boyfriend in the background of a picture posted on our local bars page. He was supposed to be at work, and I'd never been given a reason not to trust him. So I figured it was an older picture as we go there a couple times a month. But when he got home that day, he was wearing the same blue button-up and jeans. I had a horrible feeling in my stomach, but I didn't say anything. That night, I went through his phone. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I don't care. We've always shared passwords and have never had an issue with using each other's phones. When I checked his messages, I saw a chain with someone named Jack. We didn't know a Jack, so I read through them, and my heart just freaking breaks. I've known my best friend since we were in diapers, I know how she texts. But I checked the number just to be sure. Yep, they were talking behind my back. Not just talking though, there were pictures and mentions of sexy time acts. No acts that were fantasized about, but acts of sexy time that had happened. I spent the night crying, and sending myself all of the screenshots and everything I could find. By morning, I realized that I can't just confront them. I need to prepare for this. So I set out to put money aside. I tell him our fridge is broken, so I'm using some of our savings to fix it, we need a plumber for this or a handyman for that. All lies, but I needed a reason to pull money out of the account we both had access to. It took me two months of, making it seem to work again, switching it up with having issues again with the fridge. I was able to pull out enough to put a deposit, and pay a couple months in advance on a new apartment that I found, that was closer to work and pet friendly. I was able to slowly move stuff there while he was at work. I told him I was doing some spring cleaning to clear out the clutter. In the meantime, I wouldn't just let them have their cheating adventures behind my back. No, I messed with their heads, big time. I'd mention things about each other, that would cause drama. Like telling Max, that Amy talked about a cute guy from work. Or telling Amy, that Max mentioned marriage and kids with me. This would sting extra deep, because she's infertile due to a childhood illness. Don't judge me, I'm taking the gloves off. The day before I left, I set my devious plan into motion. I knew where my best friend went for lunch most days of the week, so I watched and waited. When she arrived I went in and pretended I didn't want to throttle her, for breaking my trust and worse, my heart. We sat down and chatted and I slyly mentioned sexy time with Max. In their messages, she told him that she didn't want him to sleep with me, apparently she'd become quite possessive. Imagine that, she was actually being possessive, of my boyfriend. I made comments about how sore I was because we did it rough, just like I like it. How euphorically good it was, when he was petting the lady bits. You name it, I mentioned it. Her face went from trying to act to care and listen, to blushy pink. Blood rushed her cheeks and it became red and redder. It was amazing to watch. I'd seen her react that way before, but I never realized why. Now it all made sense. She'd always insist on watching late night movies with us, or ask to sleep on our couch instead of going home and be mad when I had to say no, cause I want a privacy with my boyfriend. I just thought, she was lonely or a little clingy, but I never would have imagined she didn't want to leave, because she wanted to make sure we weren't having sexy time. Later that day I go home and once again pretend, that everything is normal when I see Max. I sit down on the couch and snuggle up to him, while he watches TV. 
After about 20 minutes, I straddle him, and ask how his day was and blah blah blah. Then, I bring up that I ran into Amy at lunch and excitedly add. You'll never guess who she was with. I told him how Amy was with Dave, her real-life co-worker that has hung out with us multiple times, and how it's so cute that they're dating now. When I say he froze, I don't think he even breathed. He just sort of muttered. I, I didn't know, she was seeing someone. So I tell him all about how I caught them kissing and how cute it was. After Dave left to go back to work, Amy told me all about how amazing their sexy time life is. And of course I had to add in there, that Dave was the first guy to give her a real trip to heaven, if you know what I mean. And how it's a great relief, cause she's always had to fake it with guys before. I've never seen him look so dejected before. That night, I asked that we do a phone-free night, which we did often, so that we could be in our own bubble. I could tell that he was a little hesitant, but he turned his phone off and put it in the basket we use for it. We watched a movie and cuddled on the couch. He stayed as stiff as a board for the majority of it, before he relaxed enough to fall asleep on the couch. Once he was out, it was go time. I grabbed his work phone and sent out a contact list wide email, about how I may be in a bad mood for the next couple of weeks, because my mistress gave me the clap. Then I changed the passcode on it and turned it off. I knew that he wouldn't turn it on until he got to his work site that was 40 minutes away. As soon as he was out the door I, immediately packed my bags, important papers and the dogs, and left. I admit that's not all, cause I was feeling petty, I also unscrewed most light bulbs, took the batteries out of the remote, took the router plug in so he wouldn't have Wi-Fi, and cranked the AC up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. When I got to my new place, I sent her a text asking how my taco deluxe tastes, and then blocked them both. Then I posted screenshots to my Facebook, and let everyone know what kind of horrible people they were. The next day, his mom called me to talk things over with me. She is an amazing woman who raised him on her own, whilst creating a very profitable company. She was ashamed and disappointed in her son. Quite a curveball, but when she sadly passes away, it seemed that she changed her will. You see, he would initially take over the company. This was commonly accepted within his family. But his brother took over the company. I've heard he only gotten the minimum dollar amount, and I think it's because of his cheating. I know that hurt him in a way I couldn't imagine, because he always talked about running it and taking over for her, to make her proud. I just know he cried when she told him that. My ex-neighbor, Martha, who is around 70, is an absolute crap starter. If there is drama to be had, she will find it, or create it. I'd told her I was moving out and why about a week before I left, so she'd keep me in the loop on the aftermath. Amy moved in shortly after I left, and through the thin walls of our duplex, Martha heard everything unfold. Apparently, they fought constantly because they couldn't trust each other, go figure. Amy was always yelling about him having sexy time with me, and how she wanted all new furniture, because she couldn't sit somewhere where we hadn't been intimate. She is also a mess. Like, an actual mess. She doesn't know how to clean, throw out trash, do laundry, or cook. Max has always been, and will always be a neat freak. He thinks everything has a place, and everything should be in its place. There's no way they would be able to live together full time, without flying at each other's throats. And Mrs. Martha, bless her cheetah print soul, loved to let Amy know that Max's beautiful sister, was coming over a lot now since I'm gone. Of course, Max doesn't have a sister and she's lying, but boy did it have the desired effect of an all-out screaming contest between them. She's angry he would cheat on her, he's angry the house looks like a garbage pit. She yells because he had sexy time with me in the kitchen, just after they had sexy time in her apartment. He tops her by yelling. You're the biggest mistake I ever made. I want my ex back. That hits her hard. So hard apparently, that she starts throwing stuff at him and he calls the cops on her. She already had a bit of a record for fighting at bars and clubs, so when the police get there, they detain her and have her sit on the curb out front. Mrs. Martha comes out to be nosy and see what's going on. She gives a statement about what she hears and, as they are putting Amy in the back of the squad car, she yells out to Amy. Don't worry darling, I'm sure Max's sister will come over to clean the house. I tell y'all. I love this woman with all of my heart. Amy freaks the hell out, and starts trying to run at Max, and gets tased, and put in the back of a squad car. Max tells her to stop trying to interfere, but of course, that means nothing to mighty Mrs. Martha. So she just smiles and goes back into her house. <laughs> Amy got released a couple days later after making bail, and only went back to the duplex a couple of times, 
both with police escorts, so we think Max took out an order of protection against her. Max has made multiple Facebook pages to message me and apologize, but I blocked them all immediately. He's called my work as well, but thankfully I work remotely, and I already told my supervisors not to give out any information regarding me or my contact details. I don't have any siblings or family for them to reach out to, so I figured, if they'd try to reach me, they would do it through my job. I'm not sure what happened with his work emails, though I'm assuming he had a lot of explaining to do to his bosses, co-workers and business connections. When I think about how he had to have that conversation, over and over again, it makes me smile. Amy has apparently moved to a new state, and doesn't talk with anyone in our old friend group, probably because they all came down on her pretty hard. To think about her still breaks my heart. We'd been friends all my life. When my parents died, she was my rock. She made me see past my grief and depression, and helped me to want to live life again. I'd try to think about the good times, and not let the bad times ruin them for me. When I was reading their messages, I could see the evolution of the conversations, and the happiness they shared at doing things behind my back. The night I was reading them, it was like my ribs burned and my stomach was queasy, but I had to think logically rather than emotionally. I didn't truly break down, until I got to my new apartment. I just sat on the floor of my new kitchen and cried, for what felt like hours. It took me a couple of weeks, but I slowly started to unpack and find a new rhythm in my new life. Juno and Meatloaf, the dogs, helped a lot too. They were a little nervous over the move and not having Max with them, but as of today, they are amazing and happy we've moved somewhere with a dog park. This was four-ish years ago, so I've moved on in life, but it definitely left some scars. I started therapy six months after I moved out, and that has helped a lot, but I still haven't been able to put myself into a trusting relationship. I've yet to have another long-term partner, as it just gives me too much, anxiety and trust issues. I love it. They couldn't get mad, without admitting their guilt. This is the good stuff. I'm smiling whilst hearing your story. I know it's a long time ago, but I'm happy for you. Hope you've met someone more deserving. Some people don't believe my story. I can't change that. But I will offer some extra information surrounding these questions. We'd always been open with each other, but we were together for five years. I didn't go through his phone searching for things, at most, I'd use it to search something on Google if mine was in another room, or to look at the time. I trusted him. I told him that the refrigerator wasn't getting as cold as it was supposed to, so I hired a handyman to fix it. It was an easy $500 to withdraw, to not have him ask why. I didn't say it was totally broken for two months straight, that would have definitely been suspicious and too inconvenient. I also saw that someone said, that they would have talked to each other and figured out I was messing with their heads, but it was never anything that was out of left field. Max and I did talk about our future together, and that included the fact that we wanted kids. I'd envisioned myself being the mother to his children, and that was a big dream that came crashing down for me. Someone also asked about his mom. No she didn't take him out of the will immediately, from what I understand, she didn't do that until later, after the incident with Amy and the police. I didn't find out until a year or so afterwards, when we had a random call to catch up, she didn't offer any in-depth details, and I didn't ask. I'd been in therapy for a bit at that point, and I didn't want to be pulled back in. I'll jump straight into it. And I'll say it beforehand, oh yes I did. But not intentionally. We had been married for 23 years, together for 26, she was my everything. I loved this woman, and would have gone through hell and back for her. But she chose to have an affair. My ex had an affair with her psychologist. And when I found out, she had absolutely no remorse. None, zero. Spent the next three months in total depression, not able to understand what happened. There was no sign of marital discord, we just got back, from what I thought was a nice trip to California to visit some relatives. That's when I found out about her cheating ways through texts, that she was doing right in front of me. Anyways, while in this deep depression, I did everything I could to try to make it work with her. I felt the need to keep trying, but she was not having any of it. Which now, looking back on it, is a great thing. She went on to tell our daughter. I'm moving on to be happy. You guys are all grown and moving out. It's time for me to think about my own luck. Before she went on her way, she told our daughter. He's going to have a hard time getting over me. 
he'll surely lose his job, and I have no doubts he will become an alcoholic. And she was almost right. It took me three months of that deep depression, which included contemplating self-deletion, off work on stress leave, and drinking myself to sleep, and drinking as soon as I woke up. I'm not proud of this, I was not in a good place at all. I'm not at all saying I was a perfect husband. I don't think there is one out there, but I cared about her deeply, and made sure she had everything a wife could want. However, during those three months, I started to see a therapist, stopped drinking, stopped having the bad thoughts, and finally got my booty back to work. And this is where the unintentional revenge enters. During those three months, my ex-wife and I did communicate, and when I realized there was no reconciling this marriage anymore, we talked about what our plans were going forward. I told her, that I was going to move back to my hometown and buy a condo. And because of my job, I had the freedom to travel to friends and family abroad. We both knew that these specific people, from California, Mexico, Australia, etc., wouldn't want to have anything to do with her, due to the cheating. We used to go there to have a great time together. We have great memories from those places with those people. I told her I only needed a home base, to where my mail could be delivered to and I was working on that. Unexpectedly, this made her upset, because it wasn't what she wanted to hear, and she knew she no longer had access to those places, because they were my family and friends, siding with me. She bluntly said, Well, don't you have everything just figured out? Fast forward a few months, and my ex and I got together to discuss the terms of the separation. But before this, someone I used to date and I was close to marrying back in 1992, re-entered my life, after 29 years apart through Facebook Messenger. She friended me about the time I started going back to work, which makes me think that she was creeping my Facebook page, as I didn't have the security settings set very high, and figured it was a good time to reach out. She lives close to the same city that I go for camping, so we got together for a quick dinner, before I had to fly back to my home, which didn't feel like my home anymore, and it was like we never missed a beat. The spark, was still there. During dinner we made plans for me to return back early, before I had to go back up to camp. So upon returning to my house, as I said, my ex-wife and I got together to discuss the separation agreement. As she had now moved out to live with her, sister. Now remember. Her plan was to move on and be happy, and I would be depressed, lose my job and become an alcoholic. So when we finished discussing the separation agreement, she asked. So, are you still planning on moving back home? I answered honestly and said, no not really. Confused, she looked at me and asked. Why not? I must admit, this part was very satisfying. So I told her sheepishly, I kinda met someone. Now there's an absolute look of confusion on her face, and the pressure build up to the point she couldn't hold back. What do you mean, you met someone, you just returned to work? Where? Where did you meet this person? So I told her that this person friended me on Facebook and we talked on Messenger, and that she lived close to the city from where I go to camp from. So we went for dinner and we had a great time together, and that I was going back early, to spend time with her. Now, my ex knew about this person and the relationship I had with her before I met her, and was very insecure towards this person. Even though I hardly had any contact with her throughout the 29 years, besides a few emails from her, asking how I was doing, where I was working, how the kids were doing, Nothing more than friendly emails, which my wife read. This was before the days of texting and social media. Now, you could actually see the wheels spinning in my ex-wife's head, and the pressure builds up in her face. Till the point she just blurs out what she's thinking. The first question. Did you know this person before? Yes. Do I know this person? Yes, you do. No, is it, Miss Lovejoy? Yes. It actually is. Well, from a person that had absolutely no remorse in what she did. All of a sudden, the waterworks started coming out of her eyes and couldn't stop. Then she frantically said. I'm not crying, because you're with, that woman. I'm crying, because of what I did to you. I knew it was bullcrap, but didn't say it. She left shortly thereafter. I then learned that she went back to her sisters, who lived about 500 yards away from our house and she could not stop crying. Her sister, who was sort of on my side through this whole thing, but had to support her sister, I get that, asked her what she was crying for. Her words. You didn't want him anymore. You didn't want him to try to save the marriage, you didn't want him bringing you flowers. 
You remember you didn't want him to send you cards, letters, or texts? You didn't want to go to a marriage counselor, like he asked. You explicitly said you didn't want him coming by the house, asking to go for a walk with you. You wanted him to leave you alone so that you could move on and be happy. So it seems to me you got what you wanted. So why are you crying? Then I found out that later that evening, when her sister returned after work, my happy ex-wife was found passed out outside on the deck in her nightwear with vomit in one of the planters. Today, a year and a half later, I am still with my new, old, love and life has been wonderful. We have done so much together and have so much planned in the future. And where's my ex? Don't know, don't care. But I do hope she finds that happiness that I guess I could never give her. I know that my love is getting it now. Funny thing my ex texted me. There's not one person I have talked to that doesn't believe you weren't with Miss Lovejoy before I cheated. You just weren't caught. Well, I told her the same thing she said to me when I asked her about her cheating and if there was another man. When I knew the answer, believe what you want to believe. And so to finally answer the question, I got revenge on a cheating wife of 23 years. Yes, I did. Did it make me feel better? Absolutely. But now I've moved on and I'm enjoying life. Thank you for letting me relive my revenge. To clear up any confusion, you have to know that I'm a man who's into both sides. I love sharing this story because I'm still proud of it. A few years ago, my girlfriend cheated on me with another guy. She then had the audacity to tell me, if you're a grown up, you could deal with it. I just hope we can stay friends, even though I lost feelings for you. I'm just really in love, like fully in love. If she didn't say this, I wouldn't have done any of this. I could just move on. But this stuck with me and fueled my revenge plan into existence. Now it's my responsibility to teach her a valuable lesson. I was in a depressed state for a long time and couldn't bring myself to delete her number. Besides, she thought I was her friend now. She started to send me pictures of her and her new boyfriend with laughing emojis. She didn't even care about how much she had hurt me. And then one day, while I went through Tinder, I found someone who was quite familiar her new boyfriend. Of course, I wouldn't tell her that her new boyfriend is on Tinder. In fact, I matched with him, which was quite surprising because I thought he was straight. We started a conversation and he didn't know who I was. She never told him she was in a relationship while she was flirting with him. Wow, she is bad, but this was perfect. We had longer conversations and he told me more and more about him. Over the weeks, we learned more and more about each other and my plan started forming. I suggested that we could meet each other at a bar, to which he agreed. Keep in mind, he was still in a relationship with my ex-girlfriend at that time. When we met, we had a great time, and one date became many dates. It took me few months, but then I got him to the point where he developed feelings for me, and I was his secret affair. What he didn't know, is that I got in contact with my girlfriend's former ex-boyfriend as well. He broke up with her, because he came out while he was in a relationship with her. I was in contact with both guys. The ex-boyfriend and I got along very well. In fact, I made him a close friend of mine. In our conversations with my new boyfriend, we talked about personal adventures desires we would like to experience. And there it was. He said that he always wanted to have a party of three. So I suggested one, with the ex who came out. When I asked that ex if he'd be interested, to my actual surprise, he said yes. I'm honestly still surprised how all of that worked out without her noticing, but it did, and then the day came where I decided to go nuclear. Long story short, we met at my apartment. We socialized and they also got to know each other better. I made sure to take a selfie from a safe distance. Close enough, that she could see their faces, but far enough, that they wouldn't notice. Then we kept on partying, and I won't go into any detail, but I enjoyed myself more than anything in the world. A few days later, I told him that now that I granted him his wish, I felt free to ask something in return. I said I don't like to be in an affair any longer. I told him that he should either break up with her, or I will break up with him. I understand it's manipulative, but I didn't feel bad, because he also cheated. And it was part of my plan, and I want to see it through. He actually broke up with her, and threw her out his apartment. I even got him to move out of his apartment, to move in with me. Meaning that she lost both her home, 
and her boyfriend. But I wasn't done yet. Because after that, she texted me with crying emojis, telling me, My boyfriend left me, I regret leaving you so much. I could only react with, Your boyfriend? Are you talking about this guy? And I sent her the selfie I took. She called and texted me several times, but I ignored her. My plan was almost successful. There were only three things left that I still had to do. The first was that I told, her mother, who hates infidelity more than anything, because her father cheated on her mother, with another woman. You could say, like father like daughter. Her mother was angry, but thank me for telling her. From what I've heard, is that her mother cut ties with her. I must admit that I don't know if it's because of her cheating on me, and I don't know or think that it happened for long term. But it would be funny, if it was true. The second thing I did, was dumping him because unfortunately for him, he was a cheater too, and I hate infidelity as well. The last thing I did, was going out with her first ex-boyfriend, and after a few dates we got together, and we are still a couple. In the end, I destroyed both her and the guy she cheated on me with. And couldn't be more proud of myself. Maybe Hallmark could make a holiday story out of this. Do I believe it? Kinda. Is it possible? Yes. Do I want it to be real? Yes, yes I do. Do did not let her slide. Really hit her with the Ebenezer Scrooge past, present and future. You stayed till the end, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. Thank you for your support, I really appreciate you. Subscribe, so you don't miss out on future episodes and show your vengeful devotion, by tickling the like button without mercy. Do you have any experiences surrounding the topic of this episode? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. I'll be seeing you, in the next one. Remember that these stories are shared for your entertainment. This content is to be taken as such, and nothing else. Royal AI, rejects advocation or instigation of illegal actions.